14 and 32. Mark 14 and 32. <clears throat> and they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. Right? And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be sore amazed, and watch this, and to be very heavy. In King James Version. And he saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. He says, Tarry ye here and watch. Right? Verse 35. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. <clears throat> Verse 36. And he said, Our Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Verse 37. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Verse 38. He says, watch ye and pray. Lest ye enter into temptation. He says, the spirit is truly ready, but the flesh is weak. Verse 39. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words to God. Went back and prayed the same prayer. Right? Uh, verse 40. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they want to answer. Verse 41. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Verse 32, and, and this is where we stop. He says, rise up, let us go. Lo, he that have, uh, betrayed me is at hand. Jump back up, jump back up, jump back up to verse 34. Uh, matter of fact, go, go to verse 33. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And he saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Terry here and watch. Now, now, for clarity, let's go to the Passion Translation of this. The Passion Translation of this. We're going to start at verse 32, and I want to read from 32 to 42 uh, again, because I need you to hear it in both translations, and then we're going to dissect this. Uh, Jesus, uh, he says, Then Jesus led his disciples to an orchard called the oil press. He told them, Sit here while I pray a while. He took Peter, Jacob, and John with him. An intense feeling of great horror plunged his soul into deep sorrow and agony. <clears throat> and he said to them, my heart is overwhelmed with anguish and crushed with grief. It feels as though I'm dying. He said, stay here and keep watch with me. He walked a short distance away and being overcome with grief, he threw himself face down on the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, he would not have to experience this hour of suffering. He knew what was ahead of him. He knew his purpose. He knew his assignment uh, in the earth. He knew what he was born to do. And he knew that the time of it was coming. He knew that the hour was almost there. And so in Jesus and in, in his humanity, because he was man and God, he, he, he began to feel he sorrowful and, 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 and scared. He, he didn't want to go through with what he had to go through with. You know, the, the humanity part. And, and he began to say, God, if you, he, says, he, he, talk, he told his father, he said, you are all powerful. So I know you're able to take this away from me. I know you're able to get me out of this. He said, he said let, if, if you can, let this cup pass from me, this cup of suffering pass from me. But then he immediately 
step back into his assignment or, or into the anointing of his assignment, into his reason, he, he begins, he says, no, no, you know what? No, not my will. But your will be done. Many of us, all of us, know that we have a purpose from God on our lives. We have an assignment. The enemy has caused some of us to walk in fear. He has caused some of us to be intimidated, sorrowful, scared. He's called you to sit down on what you know you are supposed to be doing for the kingdom of God. And for many of us, if, if, if you're anything like me, God has already shown you what you are to do. He, 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 gave, he gave you a, a clear picture of how he wants you to do it, when he wants you to do it, but he also showed you that, that, that in doing what I called you to do, there's going to be some people that's going to hate on you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to mistreat you. They're not going to support you. They're not going to love you. They're going to backstab you. And, if, and, and, if, and for many of us, we, we, we know all these things and, and, and we discern all these things and it causes us to not do anything because of what we have to go through for our assignment. Because what we have to go through because there's a calling on our lives. And, 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 and you know from experience that if you, are, if you have any type of calling on your life, there will be some hell days. Hallelujah. There will be some days you have to go through tests and trials and tribulation, but you have to remain focused. You have to remain in God. You have to remain in His strength and complete the assignment God has given you. Jesus was here. Jesus, who had done miracles, healed the sick, raised the dead. He was having an issue. He was having a problem. He was, the Bible clearly says it. He says his heart began to be overwhelmed with anguish and crushed with grief. It feels as though he was dying. He, 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 he said, he said, he said, I, I'm being overcome with this and, and I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing uh, suffering. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being tormented in my mind. Jesus. And he knew what he had to do. He knew why he was born. Watch this. He was born to die. But when it came time to die for a moment, he said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. The stuff I got to go through. The things that I already been prophesied of my coming. I knew what I had to, I knew I had to be beaten. I knew I had to be just, I knew all of these things. I knew what they were going to do to me. I knew I had to be nailed to the old rugged cross. I knew nails had to go through my hands and nails through my feet. And he began to think about uh, what he had to go through uh, to complete the assignment over his life. And he said, Lord, if you, if you will, let, let, let this pass from me. Yeah. Let this, how many of you say, ah, I know you called me to preach, but I don't want to do it because I don't want to be attacked. I don't want people to remember my past. God, I, I, I know I'm supposed to own this, be open and own this business and run this business for the kingdom of God, but I don't want to do it because I, I don't want to struggle with it. I don't want to, I don't want to be uh, embarrassed if it doesn't work. What excuses have you given God to do, what, to not do what you know you are supposed to be doing? What excuses have you told yourself? Matter of fact, what excuses are you living in right now? Many of you are miserable with your life. I should be much further than where I am right now. And, and I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing that. I'm supposed to be doing this and the other. But you're not. And the reason why you're not doing it because something along the way stopped you. Something along the way told you that what you are trying to accomplish is bigger than you. And you were intimidated. You got scared. And you quit. You didn't have that part where Jesus said, uh, 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 he said, he said, he said, please allow me to drink this. Uh, he says, please don't allow me to drink this cup of suffering. Yet, what I want is not important. You didn't have that moment of snapping back and saying, no, God, you know what? Although I, I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. Although I don't really want to go through this. You, 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 didn't, you didn't go to go that thing in your mind that said, you know what? It's not about me. Jesus said this, he says, yet what I want is not important, for I only desire to fulfill your plan for me. 
What is your desire this morning, people of God? What is your desire? Is your desire to continue to sit on your couch and watch everybody else uh, walk and flourish in their assignment and in their purpose? Or are you going to continue to just stay, play it safe and not do anything? No. No. What is the plan of God for your life? Oh, what has God assigned you? Why were you born? Why were you born? And are you doing what you were born to do? Are you, do I'm not saying all of it right now, but are you at least walking in the part that you are supposed to be walking in during this time in your life? What are you doing? Because trust me, fulfillment only comes from purpose. Fulfillment only comes from purpose. That's when I am doing what I have been purposed to do. You ever watch uh, seen people that are always trying a hundred million different things? It's because they are they are uh, experimenting on life. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They're going to try all type of stuff. But when you find that thing, hallelujah, when you find that piece that you know I, you were created to do, now it may be many different things. It may be five or two different things. But you want to know I'm supposed to because, listen, because house on the inside of you are many gifts and talents. Watch this. But you won't go through life experimenting on things. I believe that when you're walking your purpose, hallelujah, and you line up with the timing of God, that everything you touch, hallelujah, will prosper in Jesus' name. When you're walking in his ways and you're walking in his instructions and you're walking in his timing, everything you touch, everywhere every you go, hallelujah, God is going to bless it. He's going to make that thing prosper right before your eyes. And Jesus is here. He said, he said, he said, he says, he says, I'm a father of all things are possible for you. Please don't allow me to drink this cup of suffering. Yet, what I want is not important. For I only desire to fulfill your plan. And, 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 and your desire has to be, has to, be to fulfill, fulfill the plan of God. Not your plan. But it has to be to fulfill the plan of God. What has God told you to be doing during this time of quarantine? What has God told you to do? How has God told you to get in order or, get, or, or to align yourself during this time of quarantine? How have you been preparing for when this thing is all over with? Because there will be need of you. God has need of each and every one of you. How are you preparing? Watch this. Watch this. Jesus is the perfect example of purpose being fulfilled. He had started ministry, he had ministered three years, but he fulfilled his purpose. He fulfilled, he fulfilled the reason why he was born. Yeah, you know what? He fulfilled the very, he came for a purpose, walked in his purpose, and fulfilled his purpose. That that, that right there, that's our example of how we should be living. I hope I'm making sense. How we should be living our lives. We have a purpose. We walk in our purpose. And before we take our last breath, we would have fulfilled our purpose in God. What are you doing? What are you doing with what God has given you to do? It's only inside of me. Everything you, you don't need them. You don't need what you think you need. No. God has given you everything you need on the inside of you. Watch this. When Jesus went to pray, his, his, his homeboys went to sleep. Mm -hmm. they, and he went to them three times. And every time he went to them, they were asleep. And the last time he went, the Bible says, they couldn't even open up their eyes. They were so sleepy. So, you, you, you know, you may not have people there to support you or may, have, may not have people there to agree with you in prayer, but you have everything you need on the inside of you to accomplish the assignment God has given you. It's not predicated upon who's with you and who's not with you. No, God didn't give nobody else that power. So if they left you, hallelujah, it doesn't matter. God still, his will will still be done in your life. Uh-huh. If they, uh, 
uh, talked about you and, and created all type of rules, it doesn't matter. They can't hinder or stop your purpose. Only you can do that. Right? Only you can do this. So Jesus, he didn't get distracted by them not, not staying up to pray with him. Yeah. It was disappointing, but it didn't distract what he had to do. And Jesus was such in his place that the, the, the Bible said that he went back and prayed the same prayer again. God, take this cup from me. You got power to do it. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Nevertheless, as long as you keep a nevertheless, I don't care how scared you may get, I don't care how confused you may be, I don't care how intimidated you may be, nevertheless, nevertheless, I am going through, nevertheless, I'm going, I'm going, to, I'm going to pursue every dream, every goal, every vision, God has get, I am going to get there in God. Don't you ever tell yourself you can't do something, because we can do what? All things. Through Christ that strengthened us. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus, again, when he was our perfect example of purpose being fulfilled. A perfect example of being focused in his purpose. Watch this. You're saying, I don't want it. This thing is too big. Nobody in my family ever accomplished this. When nobody ever came to the earth, knew he had to die, went through a terrible crucifixion or, or a, a, a terrible death and, and rose on the third day. Nobody ever did that, but he came and did it. He came and, he came and accomplished it. What? Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, I need to place something on the inside of you so special that you will be the first of, of many things in your family. You, you will be the first that maybe uh, owning 10 restaurants or owning a fleet of buses or, or limit, whatever the, the case may be. You may be, uh, uh, listen, are you willing to be the first one? Wow. Are you willing to step out and, and be, the God called you to be some of you millionaires. But because nobody in your family have a lot of money, you're scared to be a millionaire. The devil is a liar. God try me and see Try me and see. You have to have your heart so postured into the place to say, God, you know what? Whatever you desire, whatever you want of my life, you can have it. I'm willing and I'm ready. Hallelujah. Watch this. Uh, 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 in order to get it done, first thing you have to do, and I'm almost done, you have to accept the challenge. Accept the thing God has called you to do. Go ahead and accept it. Accept it. You're a preacher, get ready to preach. I ran from it for years, and many preachers and pastors, we all got the same story. It was the last thing we wanted to do. Some people want to do it, and they call it themselves. That's a whole other message. But many of us that, that really got the call, we did not, and for a lot of us, nobody else in our family, they may have been in church, but we don't come from like a bloodline of preachers. It's just something God said, bam, I want you to preach. Right? Some of us got saved by the drugs. He, he pulled you from the street and put you on the pulpit. You didn't want to do it. It was too big in your mind. Tried to figure things out of your mind. You, you did not want to. It, it seemed too great of an assignment. It seemed too much of a, of, a, of a worthy assignment you felt you wasn't worthy to carry. I've been there. Still deal with it to a certain degree. Like, God, we're not, we are not worthy to be even standing before your people, but yet you allow us. Yet you put your hand on us to, to declare your word or to preach or teach your word or to sing your praise. You think that we're worthy enough to do these things. But we still get uh, at times intimidated by the call or, or, or feel that we're not good enough. But we all have to keep that. But nevertheless, we got to get out there and do it. Right. Nevertheless, we got to get up there and dance. Nevertheless, we got to get up there and minister. Nevertheless, we got to get up there and preach. Nevertheless, we got to get up there and sing. Sick, we got to sing. Uh -huh. Tired, we got to preach. Uh -huh. Just lost love one, we got to continue to do what God has called us to do. We have to have a nevertheless to not let anything that happens in your life stop you from walking in your purpose. Yes, God. I don't care what happens. This virus, COVID-19, it should not stop you from walking in your purpose. If you are a preacher, you should be at home preaching. By the time all this is over with, you should have all types of sermons written out. Yeah. 
If you are an author or a writer or a designer, write a book, your book should be all, almost done, if not done, in Jesus' name. If you plan to own a business, you should have your blueprint or some type of strategy written out. Yeah, because, listen, what has happened in the world and the shutdown of the system of the world should not have shut you down. Matter of fact, I, I, I use preachers. I, 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 when I'm asleep, I'm preaching. Yeah, you, you, I know I'm, uh, when, when I'm asleep, I'm singing. Melodies and, and, and combinations are coming up in my head and, and all type of, uh, when I'm asleep, because it's my purpose. It's what I've been created to do. And as a matter of fact, when you know that you've been created for something, you don't, you don't know how to turn it off. When you are a dancer, you just you dance to all, you, you, you just in your mind you dance and you, you're twirling around. I'm gonna catch up a twirl, she twirling around. She'll go outside in a minute and post a video of her and her flags because she's a dancer. It doesn't matter if she's out there in the woods, ain't nobody watching her with the deer. It don't matter. It, she's a dancer. And a real dancer don't need a crowd to dance in front of her. They know that every time I dance, I'm doing it for God. So whether I'm in church or whether I'm in my backyard, he still gets the glory. Yeah. 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 People don't turn up until they get in crowds of people. The devil is alive. I question whether or not you're real. I question whether or not God really called you. If you can only preach and hoop and holler and shout only when the church is full, ah, there's something wrong with that. Something wrong. If you can only shout and dance in the house of God and not in your living room, watch me. Something is wrong with that. If you can only feel the presence of God when you're in the room full of saints and room full of musicians and room full of singers, I, something is wrong with that. Because the same uh, uh, presence I feel here at the powerhouse, I feel at home, I feel in my, uh, in my car, I feel uh, in Walmart, I feel him everywhere. And if I, and if I didn't think I'd get put out, I'd put a step in Walmart. I don't know. Don't do that. <laughs> but God, he's, he's still worthy of you in Walmart. So the first thing you have to do, you have to accept the challenge. Accept what God has called you to do. And I know you right now, the Holy Spirit is speaking to many of you. And he's telling you, he's confirming, reconfirming things over and over uh, as it relates to what you've been called to do and what you've been purposed to do. And you've been running from it today. Hallelujah. God has given you another chance uh, for you to accept what he has called you to do. Next thing you have to do, you have to pray through the challenge. Jesus in the garden, he was praying. He didn't go to play games. He didn't go to whine, to whine and complain. No, he went to pray. He went to pray. He went to pray and he prayed himself through it. Because in verse 42, when we see that, and I read this in the Passion uh, Translation, uh, 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 41, he said, after praying for the third time, he returned to his disciples and awoke them saying, do you plan on sleeping and resting indefinitely? He said, that's not enough sleep. He said, the end has come and the hour has arrived for the Son of Man to be handed over to the authority of simple men. And, and he was ready at this point. Verse 42 says, get up and let's go. He says, get up and let's go. I, I, I've shaken off the little thing that, that I've been with. I, I, I was nervous and, and, and I wanted this cup to pass from me, but now I'm ready. I prayed through it. I got strength from my father and I'm ready to go and I'm ready to fulfill this assignment God has told us that I was going to do. I am ready to accomplish this. Oh, although I is this bigger, although I know this is going to be bad, I'm still ready. I don't care because my God is with me. He still, he's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. Hallelujah. I am ready. Yes, nobody has ever done this before. Uh-huh. I know I'm the first one to do it, but Ready. Yeah. It's time to get up and get up and go. All right. The next one you have to do. You have to kill the will of your flesh. Kill the will the of, of your flesh. He said, nevertheless. Nevertheless. Watch this. Well, he says, he says, he says this in verse. He says, my heart is overwhelmed. No, let's go to 36. Now read it again. He says, he prayed, our Father, 
Uh, but my father, all things are possible for you. Please don't allow me to drink this cup of suffering. He says, yet what I want is not important, for I only desire to fulfill your plan for me. Do, give me verse 36 in King James. Give me verse 36 in King James Version. Uh, uh, you have to, my third point again, you have to kill the will of your flesh. All right, he said, and he said, of the Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Not my will be done, but your will be done, God. You have to, you have to kill, kill the will of your flesh. You have to tell your flesh, flesh, get in order. We have an assignment to do. We can't be out here living all raggedy and living all crazy. We got. We, we have to live a holy life that's acceptable and pleasing to God. You have to tell yourself, you have, you have to kill the will of your flesh. Your flesh wants you to sit down. Your flesh wants you to uh, turn your back on God. Your flesh wants you to live any type of way Monday through Saturday and live holy on Sunday. Your flesh wants you to do any and everything you big and bad enough to do, but your spirit saying, nevertheless, no, 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 no. You have to be holy. Hallelujah. You got to be righteous. You have to live a good, holy, and sanctified life in Christ Jesus. My fourth point. Don't rely on others to help or support you. Them guys kept going to sleep. Kept going. His friends that had been walking with him and doing ministry with him. They knew because he had been telling them what, what was going to happen to him. But they kept going. People will sleep on you in the darkest times of your life. That's true. The ones you thought that would be there for you and help you pray or, or support you, they will be the main ones, hallelujah, they'll be the main ones to not show up. Yeah. And I think God allows things like this to happen in our life or allows them to do that because it, it, it'll really show uh, who you trust in and who you are depending on. It'll really show uh, just where uh, uh, your, your strength and your help is coming from because we have many people that if certain people don't support them, they won't do nothing. That's true. If, if your wife don't support you or if your dad, uh, your, uh, your husband don't support you or if your mother don't support you or if your father don't support you, uh, you tend to not do anything. That's a spirit from the devil that does not want you to succeed in your purpose.